And we're live with Rohit Goyal from Jedi Swap, straight from Starknet CC in Paris. It's, it's quite a big day celebrating the Starknet ecosystem. Uh, very happy to have you here. What's up? Thank you for inviting me and great conference. You have done an amazing job, Sam. And this is the best conference I've been to, like no lies, <laughs> both from a venue perspective and energy. Thank you so much. Hopefully the next steps uh, live up to, to the to what we've had like for this first half of the event. Yeah. But we're not here to talk about the conference, but to talk about your project. Could you give us at a high level uh, briefing and, and high level explanation about what you guys are working on at Jedi Swap? Sure. So there are two parts to understand about Jedi Swap. So what is Jedi Swap as a product and how De Jedi Swap works? So Jedi Swap is an AMM. It's a decentralized exchange on StockNet. And it's the way it works is it's a DAO. So there is not a single person in Jedi Swap on a financial contract or a legal contract. What that means is everyone is a contributor. It's, it's done from the community. It's a bottom up organization. And because of that, we are basically also creating frameworks for how bottom up organizations can coordinate with each other. So it's like how digital organizations will look like where you do not even know the name of the other person, where you do not know where they are from or their time zone, but you can still coordinate, you can still produce products. So that's what Jedi Swap is. All right, all right. So now I wanna dive a little bit more into details that I, I found while exploring um, your website, your products, your communities. Um, you claim that um, trading on Jedi Swap requires zero gas fees. Yeah. Could you uh, elaborate a bit on that, on yeah. that notion? Yeah. So thanks to StockNet. So first of all, gas fees are going to be really, really low in on StockNet. And also as it scales, that is going to go even lower. So what we figured out is, so there are two fees you pay when you use any DEXs. One is the trading fee and one is the gas fee. So on Uniswap, for an example, the trading fee is 0.3% of whatever you are trading, especially for Win2. And at the same time, whenever you are making an exchange or you are doing a transaction, you are paying on Ethereum which could be the bigger part, especially for a transaction, which are lows, lower than $1,000. Uh, it could be $50 sometimes, depending on gas fees. So because gas is really low on StockNet, what we realize is we can remove that whole step that improves the user experience. And that also creates this dip, like very familiar Web2 kind of an experience where you just pay trading fee and we can compensate the gas fee using the trading fee. Just so to offer a exactly. better experience because yeah, it's... Uh... It's a fee that uh, it, it doesn't grow that much uh, in a linear fashion as the 0.3% exactly. fee. So exactly. you, have, you can actually afford to exactly. just take, exactly. take it off the equation. And exactly. that's definitely an interesting trick UX wise. But um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to dig a little bit more here and ask you, you know, there are a lot of AMMs, yeah. uh, Uniswap forks and everything here. Yeah. I reckon it's not a fork of Uniswap because it's a Cairo code base. Yes. You were one of the first Cairo contributors yes. back in the days, in the yes. top 50. So, Aside from the Zap function, yeah. why would I use Jedi Swap? You mentioned the DAO and the component that there are no, like, uh, let's say, legal parties involved in the, in the like entities that are having yeah. an involvement with the with the whole trading experience. Could you tell me more? As I'm a persona, I'm mm -hmm. the Mister. I use AMM on Ethereum mainnet or yeah. Optimism guy. Yeah. Why would I also try exploring a Jedi Swap? What's coming up next? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think there are two elements from the product perspective itself. So one, as I mentioned, is user experience. So if you use any other chain, uh, for an example, Ethereum, let's say you want to add liquidity. So the user experience is really bad. You have to do three clicks. You have to approve token A, you have to approve token B. I can't abstraction coming. Exactly. <laughs> so you can do a single transaction. So we are using multi calls to yeah. make the user experience really simple. We are obviously going to be the cheapest and basically gas less AMM. And third thing, what we are really doing is we are also now researching on different ways of AMM. So how do you really optimize for capital efficiency? The functions. Yeah. Yeah. Editing, yeah. So there are actually three different approaches. One is like order books approach. So we are exploring on-chain order books. Uh, there is auction mechanism. If you are familiar with CowSwap, for an example. So we are exploring Dutch, Dutch auction mechanism. And there is AMM curves, like what you're doing Swap V3 is. So we are basically doing a lot of research, deep research in all these three directions to basically do the V2, which, which might be a little bit better from capital efficiency perspective as well. Now I would like to explore another topic. Could you tell us more about this mesh community concept that you have in Jedi Swap? Yeah. So uh, as I told you, like at Jedi Swap, there is not a single person on a contract. So if you do not have a single person on contact, how do you get work done? How do you communicate with 
people and how do you bring responsibilities? These are the toughest challenges, right? Yeah. Because in a centralized organization, it comes from fear of getting fired or like I want to get promoted and things like that. Uh, so here we are basically designing modules or we are designing frameworks where we are basically in a particular skin set, you do work in certain ways. So like in case of coding, you push a commit. That's the unit. Uh, in case of design, you either create a video, you create a website design, you create a poster, things like that. So for each skill set, we are designing like what kind of a work a person does in this skill set. And then we are basically creating a contributor measurement system for that. Like if banner is 10, then the whole website design is 100. Now, when you do that, what you have done is it does not link to the person. It's the work. Now everyone can come and compete to complete this work. So one, more people are creating the same works. As a result, you will get work done faster. And second, you will have more options. So you'll get the highest quality of the work. So it's like the new way we are trying to create digital organizations. And it, it I think, puts a lot of impact on how humanity coordinates today. So today we are in a traditional top-down organization system. Yeah. So it ruins the information flow. Like to get everything done, you have to flow the information to the top. Most of the time, the top of the person is telling you what to do. So information is like getting arbitrage. But in this, you are not relying on a manager to define your salary. So you are always being an owner. So it starts with creating a community first. Do you believe in this thing? Why do you want to be part of this community? It, it, it is not financial reasons. It is like, oh, I believe in this thing. I believe in fairness. I believe in transparency. That's why you join the community. Then you think about, okay, like if you are part of this community, what this community wants to do. We want to push the same ethos to the people. We want to educate people about Web3. It's not about just buying the token. It's about understanding what Web3 means. So we do a lot of content work. We basically invite people into our community tell them like what are the ways of building Web3. And in that process, now we are building all these products, which includes DeFi protocols, but we are also building DAO tooling and DAO frameworks to help other people as well. So you have described uh, community involvement. Um, now at the level of the, you know, the Jedi Swap company, yeah. are you recruiting certain profiles now? Um, so we do not recruit a single person. As I said, there is no contract. The really like, yeah, it's, they're, they're really? It's, it's all mesh community. Anyone can come and join it. All they have to do is join the Discord and read the start here and it will tell step by step process. Like the first step is imagine you go to a party and there are already 100 people inside that party. Now you are alone, right? You will feel shy. How do I get into this party? How do I talk to people? So it's a part of those 100 people who are already in that party to, to make you welcome, to make you feel home. And then you open up, then you tell about yourself. So that's exactly what our community managers does. They make people feel at home and they try to get information. Okay, what are you good at? Do you want to be a contributor? And then they guide the person to the next steps. And that's how basically it's a self-running engine. Like each time you are getting more and more contributors and it is exploding. It is like getting widespread out. All right. That's been like definitely cool uh, to know. And as usual, guys on the interview, you can find like on the on the description of the, on the video, you can find some relevant links to engage with. Uh, the Jedi Swap community and do your own research. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, Rohit, for being among us. And uh, we definitely, I think, we'll have the opportunity to chat again. Yeah, thank you so much, Sam. Thanks for having me.